Boom. There we go. There we go. We are here. We are here. We are here. Um, Matt, can you adjust the level a little bit on my headphones? If you're listening, rate, share, subscribe. If you're listening, also you could watch on Big Moo TV. We're just trying to connect with you, baby. We're trying to connect with you, you know? Let's start with some belly breaths. I need some belly breaths. I'll tell you why in a second. Ashe, here we are. We're we're drinking Brewmaster Special. This is the Brewmaster Special Brew. Travis Davenport, Babe Kombucha. That's what we're sipping on today. Um, but the reason I need some deep belly breaths is because I'm doing I'm back to doing intense intervention slash case management work. And that work takes a lot of of it's intense. It's intense work. And I work well within the chaos. I work well within the chaos. I work well within the chaos, but it is intense. It is intense work. But um, this is the work that got assigned. This is the work got assigned. So here we are. But I'm blessed to do what I do. Um, I'm working with working with some cool, some cool cases. When I say cool cases, I mean drastic cases, but cool in the impact that I get to make. There's one fella um, still on methadone, doing everything not to use, flushed his, his stash down the toilet, trying to get himself into treatment. Because, you know, the thing is, I can't do it for him um, in the sense that if you're an adult, you have to do all the phone calls. I can find the place for you, but when it comes down to getting yourself into treatment, if you're an adult, you have to make the phone calls, you have to do the assessment yourself. I can't do any of that for you. So. So yeah, um, I have one guy directly on methadone. I have another guy in another state where I might have to get on a flight tomorrow, tomorrow morning, and uh, um, be prepared to to assist this young man. Um, but this is what I love to do. That's what I get to do. Um, the this work is a little it's intense, you know, it's intense, but it's what we get to do. Okay, um, so. I spoke a little bit about it um, on the first episode um, of the year. What what this is going to look like, what this new this new coaching aspect, or what this new podcast aspect is going to look like, um, and it's going to look different. Where each month will be themed, each month will be th- themed, and so we have honesty, we have hope, we have faith, we have integrity, we have what else? Acceptance. We have courage, integ- oh, I said integrity, willingness. We're going to go through all these different phases and all these different um, these different themes, and our guests will speak on each of those. But today, we have no guests today. It's just me, unfortunately. Sorry, guys. It's just me. But um, it's good to do the monologues again. It's good to be back doing these with a more productive mentality. I, I tell you, last year, you run out of stuff to talk about. <laughs> it's hard. It's hard to, you know, you got to live life. Last year I got to, you know, after 2020, which was so intense with all the cultural, um, the cultural stuff going on, um, Black Lives Matter movement, Trump, Trump, fucking, you know, um, riots in the street, COVID. It's just 2020 was intense. It was a lot of, uh, a lot of content to create, a lot of, a lot of stuff to talk about. But last year I got to do a lot of living. I got to do a lot of living. Um, and I didn't necessarily, it didn't make sense to speak about in the process because I was in my work. We talk about work. We talk about work. But last year I did a lot of my work. Um, and that work was intense. That work was intense. So um, this year we get to take all of that work. I get to take all that work that was done and channel it into creating something productive and creating something inspiring 
for all of you. And there are some principles that I've decided I wanted to live by that I've been living by loosely, but I'm very, now I'm being very intentional about how I live my life. Being very intentional. So this first month, the theme is honesty, fairness, straightforwardness of conduct, adherence to the facts, honesty. So what we're going to speak about honesty, and so what I've done is I've taken, and this is part of my mentorship program, each month is themed in the mentorship program, um, honesty being the first one, hope being the second, faith being the third, the third month, and then so on. There's um, correlating correlating themes throughout the year for the next 12 months. But honesty being the first one, the first point being made is self-assessment. Being honest of where we are in our healing process. Being honest to ourselves. Being honest with ourselves. Where are you right now? Who's showing up? Who's showing up? I understand. I just worked some steps. It's at a fourth and a fifth step. And I understand that I haven't shown up in integrity the last year entirely. I wasn't I wasn't a scumbag, right? I wasn't a complete scumbag, right, Matt? Yeah, I wasn't a complete scumbag. But I didn't show up to at my highest. So I have step work to do and rights to wrong. But you get to be honest with yourself. What, what role do you play in what, what, what goes on in your life? Radical responsibility. That's what it's about. But it's honest self-assessment. What does that look like? Who am I at my root? What's important to me intrinsically? Where am I living my life? At a one to ten? Am I out of integrity in areas of my life? Sex conduct. That's always a big one for me. Am I out of integrity? In my sex conduct? Honestly. Ooh, that's a five. That's a serious one. I always bring up the sex one because I do men's work. I, I committed, I've committed my entire life's work to men. I'm no longer working with women. I will refer out when it comes to women. And sex conduct is always such a big one for men because I hate to admit it. Um, and I hope other people can be honest, other men can be honest with themselves of how driven we are by our sex life. You think that man's buying that car because he loves cars? Yeah, he loves cars, but women like that car. <laughs> women like that car too. You think that guy is fit just because he loves to be fit? Yeah, he loves to be fit, but women are attracted to that fitness. You know, success, power. If there was no, if there was no reward, if there was no inter um, exchange, uh, emotional or sexual exchange. Would men be driven to do the things that we do to create? Whole cities have been built on the on the idea of creating power. Am I right? So we get to be honest with ourselves, but the sex conduct is important. Uh, I've been more honest about my sex conduct in the last year and a half than I've ever been in my entire life. It took a lot of pain to get there, though, and I get to be honest about that. You guys have heard me speak ad nauseum about my sexual experiences. It was challenging. It was challenging. It was challenging. So be honest with yourself. We're going to go through different phases of being honest with yourself. Um, but who am I at my root? It's a huge question. And the point of this program that I'm doing is to actualize your authentic self and be honest with your authentic self. Who are you at your root? Who are you at your root? Who am I at my root? I'm a black man. I'm Eric Rias. I am a Rias child. I'm a son of many Riases. <laughs> um, I'm a father. Um, I'm a partner. Um, I'm powerful. I'm free. I'm intimate. I'm free. I'm intimate. Not powerful. That's who I am at my root. When I'm at my highest, that's who I am at my root. What's important to me intrinsically? All these principles that I aim to live by, those are important values. I will always want to tell the truth. Sometimes, ooh, let's talk about something crazy. Sometimes I want to tell the truth so bad I use it manipulative in a manipulative manner. I want to tell the truth to absolve myself. Ooh, does that even make sense? So I, I had an experience where 
I was dating a, dating a, a gal. Uh, we weren't. This is the first week we were dating. First week we were dating, um, and I slept with someone else. I slept with someone else. But this is the first. We, we've only known each other for a week, and I slept with somebody else. Is that shitty? A little bit, <laughs> but we've only known each other for a week, and we're building this relationship. And probably shouldn't have gotten into a relationship in a week, right? Probably for being reasonable, shouldn't have found myself found ourselves in a relationship. But we did. Um, and I slept with somebody else. So what did I do? And here's the dishonest. Here's the honesty to absolve myself, which is subsequently dishonest. What I did was I told the gal I was dating that I slept with somebody else. I could have not told her, and that would have been directly lying. But by telling her, I was like, but I was honest. It's tricky, right? That's tricky shit right there. That's some high-level kung fu responsibility, if you can like acknowledge that we do that. Men do that. When you're when you're ho- hooking up with a chick, um, you're hooking up with a chick or talking to a chick, and you tell her, I don't want to be in a relationship, but yet you're cupcaking. You're cuddled up at her house. You're sleeping over. And you do this for months. And you tell her, I don't want a relationship. I don't want a relationship. But yet you're, you're doing relationship shit with her. And when she's upset, when she's upset that you don't want to be in a relationship, and you tell her, you, told, you, you say, I told you I didn't want to be in a relationship. But yet you lied and manipulated and you treated her like your girlfriend. Because it suited you and your sexual needs and your, and your validation. Ooh, it's high level kung fu. This is kung fu personal development right here. That's out of integrity. Let's jump a few, a few principles out. And you're out of integrity there. Myself included. I, this is all, I, everything I speak of is stuff that I speak of from my own experience. I've done these things. I've done these things, and, and I've been honest. Honest self-assessment had, had me take a look at these things. Had me take a look at these things, and take radical ownership. Personal responsibility. How many podcasts have we done on personal responsibility? It's oh, that's just over. But it's this, it's the nature in which we have to we get to live by ownership. You did this. <laughs> you did it, and not everything. Okay, not everything. I got molested. Cool. Sick. Molested. That's not funny. It's funny for me. It's not funny for other people who are molested because they're really upset about it. I've accepted this, you know. Um, that wasn't my fault. But the healing is my responsibility. The healing is my responsibility. And getting honest with the fact that, so having my traumatic experience led to sexual hyperactivity, which led to the harm of to other people. I get to own that. Let that bitch breathe. Let it breathe. But yeah, it's honesty, radical ownership, honest self-assessment. You know, you got to ask yourself as well, are you doing your best? Am I doing my best? I I asked my team that yesterday, oh, last year. I said, do you think we're doing our best? You know, you remember when I asked you that, Matt? I said, do you think we're doing our best? Honestly, do we think we're doing our best? I did not do my best last year. And it was, and based on results, it was, it showed. I did not do my best last year. I did not. You got to be honest with yourself. Honesty. There's a lot of questions. There's some questions I want I want you to ask yourself. Are you happy? Rate from one to ten. Do you feel that you're living your life's purpose? It's a big question. Take your time when you're asking that question. Some people can quickly say no. They're working a job that they fucking hate. But some people say, dude, I went to college for this. I spent twenty thousand dollars to learn. I spent a hundred thousand dollars to learn about to learn about marketing, to learn about communications. To even become a lawyer, I spent three hundred thousand dollars when you add it all up, undergrad and law school, two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. You know, am I living my life purpose? Some people fucking spend all that money and invest all that time and hate their fucking job on a day to day day to day basis. Do you feel you're living in your purpose? Ask yourself honestly. Are you lonely? I'm lonely sometimes. You know. It's probably what gets me down the most is the loneliness. What's your biggest fear? I ask that question a lot. 
What are you most afraid of? I'll tell you mine. Rejection is my biggest fear. The fact that you're not going to accept me for who I am. Conversely, what is love to me? Love is acceptance. Love is a choice, and the choice to accept a person in their fullest expression. My biggest fear is to be rejected. And it sucks because it's a lot of rejection in life. A lot of rejection in life. What's your worst memory? My worst memory. Let's, let's see what my worst memory is, since we're going to be honest. Oh, this is really personal. Uh, I don't know if I shared this before, but um, early in my intravenous use of, of heroin, um, I just started shooting myself up. Um, a friend of mine shot me up for the first time, and I was like, this is it. We're home, baby. Um, but my first time shooting up, um, I nodded out with the needle in my arm at home at my mom's house. And my mom walked in and found me with a needle in my arm. And I can remember her running down the hallway. And I can remember the scream and the cry that she was expressing. <sighs> Tragic. I just got to the phone with a family whose loved one's been on the street, un unsafe, unmedicated, not knowing where he's going to live. Life, life is at risk in the in the cold winter months on the street, and to hear the concern in the family's heart, it's the tragedy of addiction and the tragedy of the mental health system that people like this are lost. What's your worst memory? Ask yourself. What's your best memory? If I ask myself, what my best memory is is my son being born. Why is that? I got to see God and what God was like. You know, the whole the whole situation was intense, you know. I, I, I never told the story about when my son was born. I never told, and you never heard this story. So my son's mom, I was living in San Diego, and um, it was close to her due date. It was, her, you know, her due date was three or four days, and I was like, okay, I'm going to shut, shut my life down. I'm going to go, you know, be in the desert to be there for the birth of my son. And I... So it was, it was uh, I don't remember what day of the week it was, but in the morning of that day, of the 2nd of March of 2017, um, no, not the 2nd, on the 1st, um, my, my, my son's mom started to feel contractions. And we didn't rush to the hospital. She said, no, if we rush to the hospital, they're going to have us waiting there all day, and it's, she's going to be uncomfortable in the hospital, so let's just stay home. So she's, she's having contractions, slight contractions all day. She's so round. Her belly's so round. <laughs> she's so pregnant. She's so pregnant. And, I, I, I you know, I take meds. Everybody knows I take meds. And she made it, she, we made it to the evening time, and it was time to go to bed. It's time to go to bed. So I take my night meds, and we lay down for... 20 minutes, hoping that she can get some sleep or some rest while she was having contractions and we'd wake up in the morning and be ready to go. But as soon as I took my night meds, she said, we got to go to the hospital. <laughs> so we go to the hospital and I'm, I'm drowsy, man. These meds are putting me in a bed. They're knocking me out. I'm drowsy. Drinking cup after cup of coffee after cup of coffee, supporting her. Her mom was there with us. Her back is, her, her contractions were in her low back. So she's told us to put pressure on her back and I remember hearing hearing her her the noises she was making as she was you know going through labor very specific noise that she was making so she's going through labor and and she had to wait for she had to wait for um some antibiotics to go through her system and some fluids to go through her system before they can give her an epidural so she's. It took hours. It took hours. You, that that IV drip is slow, son. It's slow. Anyway, she takes the. She gets the epidural. Her mom, uh, my my ex's mom says, go, "Eric, you can go to sleep for a little bit." I go to sleep. I wake up, and it's time to push. Three pushes, and my son was born. Seeing my son come out. Seeing, so. 
I have pictures of my 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 son's first sonogram on my fridge. My first sonogram. It's a little bean. Then I have, you know, the pictures of his second sonogram. This little this little face you can see in there. It looks like a little ghost. It's pretty creepy actually. See that little face in there? And then her belly's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And then it comes to this day where she's just been creating this this beautiful life and it, this life comes out and I see my son for the first time. He's so pink. <laughs> He's so pink. And I and literally the first thing I said to my son's mom was, we got to do this again. And she was like, fuck you, dude. She's like, we're not doing this again. You crazy. And that was, that was the best, me- the best memory I ever had because I saw God. I know God exists. I know God exists. When you see something so miraculous happen, there's no doubt that God exists. So that was my best memory. I'll never forget that day. When you get to see God. Do you feel loved? That's another question you ask yourself. Do you feel loved? By who? Some people grow their whole life never feel, never feeling truly loved. It's a serious, it's serious, it's a serious statement. Never, some people, some people never feel truly accepted their entire life. I felt loved, but I didn't feel love in my new definition. I never, I, I, I've, I didn't feel always truly accepted for who I was. You know, I'm a, I'm, I'm, wild, I'm a wild turkey, son. I'm a wild turkey. You know, not everybody enjoys that. Tatted from, you know, all the way, <laughs> all the way. You know, crazy. Who knows what I'm gonna say next? Intense. Chatty Kathy, do a lot of talking. You know, I'm intense, and I. So many, I feel. So, I felt so unaccepted so many times. Okay, do you feel loved? How many days a week do you feel sad, ashamed, demoralized, or guilty? There's been times in my life where I felt that every day. But then, what's your biggest regret? I got a lot of regrets, man. When you've been where I've been, you know, when you've done the things that I've done, it's hard not to regret things in life. Hold on. <coughs> got a lot of regrets. Excuse me. Last question, though. Last question is a good question. What's your vision for your life? What's your vision for your life? Do you ask yourself that? When's the last time you ask yourself, where do you where do you see yourself? What do you see yourself doing in this life? To be honest with you, I'm living my vision. To be honest with you, I'm living my vision. To be honest with you, I'm living my vision. But what's your vision? I want you to ask yourself that. Take your time. Ask yourself these questions. I'm going to go through them one more time. Do you do you feel that your life you, your life has purpose on a daily basis? Do you feel you are living your purpose? That's number two. Number one is are you happy right from one to ten? Number three, are you lonely? Number four, what's your biggest fear? Number five, what's your best memory? Number six, what's your worst memory? Number seven, do you feel loved and by who? And number eight, how many days a week do you feel sad, ashamed, demoralized, or guilty? Scale of one to ten. Number nine, what's your biggest regret? And ten, big question. What's your vision for your life? It's a big question. It's a huge question. But honesty. You know what? So honesty to me is about alignment. Honesty to me is about, is about alignment. Are you soul soul and mind? What kind of relationship do you have with yourself and your mind? What kind of relationship do you have with yourself? Be honest. Do you love yourself? I I have a good, I have a weird ratio. Let's say 90 10. 90% 10, 90 of the time, I am fully hopeful for the future. Love myself. 90 10. You know, 10% of the time, I'm demoralized and sad, and I don't like this. I don't like this version of me. I don't like who I am. If I'm being honest, what kind of relationship do you have with your mind? 
Do you meditate? Are you clear? Someone asked me today, what are you thinking? I'm thinking nothing. You know, my, Matt, don't you love when, when you're not thinking anything? Don't you love when it's just like, I don't, what are you thinking about? Absolutely fucking nothing. It's a great place to be. You know? But that's years of meditation. That's years of meditation. It's years of meditation. My dog is making weird noises. Um, so it's alignment. Where are you? Soul and mind. Self-talk. Are you talking shit to yourself? My brain lies to me. I've, told, I've done a whole podcast on that, right? My brain lies and talks to me, tells me shitty things. If somebody else talks to me the way my brain talks to me sometimes, I beat the shit out of them. Healthy body, integral diet, daily movement. Are you working out? Are you taking care of your body? Healthy relationships. Are you integral with your partner? In your dating life, are you are you lying for selfish ambitions? It's alignment. Ways of being, honesty. We want to talk about honesty and ways of being. How are we doing on time? 25? Perfect. We're almost done. Ways of being. Who gets to show up? And that's a choice. That's a choice. That's not, that's, not living, that's not living circumstantially. It's a choice every day. It's a choice every day who gets to show up. It's a choice every day who gets to show up. You hear that clicky clack of this bitch? Jeez Louise. She's this she's so rude. Anyway, that's my that's my dog. Um, but it's honest. We're just real. We're shooting in my living room. We're shooting in my living room. My dog's right here. Um anyway. Ways of being who you be. Who you be? I would be free. I'd be intimate. I'm intimate. What I do on this podcast is intimate shit, dude. The stuff I share here is intimate shit. It's real. It's real shit. Matt, you can put her outside if you want. All good? Um, who you be? Who you be in your highest? Who you be in your highest? Oh, my God. That's so annoying. <sighs> That's so fucking annoying. Let that bitch breathe. <sighs> Who you be though? You get to ask yourself, who's showing up? I've asked, I've talked about this in this podcast as well. Who's showing up, man? Who's doing the work? Who shows up to your job every day? Who shows up in your relationship every day? Be honest with yourself, right? Be honest with myself. Sometimes I don't show up in my highest, man. Sometimes I'm selfish, dude. Selfish and self-centeredness. It's the root of all my troubles. It's the root of all my troubles. So who's who's showing up? Who am I in other people's eyes? I know they say, oh, who cares what other people think about you? It's important. You want a job? You want that client? Do you want that client? Do you want that person to work with you? Do you want that collaboration, business collaboration? Do you want that partner? How are you showing up to others? Boom. So we had to, we had to get Athena out of here. She's running the show. <laughs> we're getting a new place. Um, we're getting a new place in the next couple of months. So she'll, it will be less compact. But it's, this, it's cool to shoot at home. I, this is what I was excited about moving here. And the new set, and I'm gonna continue to shoot. We're gonna continue, continue to shoot at home, as long as, as long as Matt's willing, um, unless he's down and build a set at his new studio. I don't know, whatever. But who are you in other people's eyes? They say don't think, don't care about who, pe- what people think about you. That is that is bullshit. How you show up to other people is important. Are you showing up late to shit? Out of integrity. Be honest with yourself. Am I showing up timid, weak, playing small? Am I showing up in my ego, people pleasing, lying? Ask yourself, how are you showing up? We'll finish up. We'll finish up. Let's talk about useful self-talk. Dylan, Dylan made a perfect analogy. You could be overweight, right? You could be overweight. And you can call yourself a fat fuck. You may be fat, 
<laughs> you may be fat, but calling yourself a fat fuck, is that productive? You could say, I'm overweight and I want to make some changes. That's what you could say. That's what you could say. But you got to be honest. But it's like being honest with yourself is cool. But being, like I said, you may be fat, but to call yourself a name and to speak of yourself in a derogatory manner, it's not, it may be, you can rationalize the honesty there. You can rationalize the honesty there. But is it productive? And when you're having those, those disempowering conversations, what happens next? What I want to encourage you is to do the spiritual opposite, the opposite action. That's where the affirmations come in. I love myself. I'm enough. I'm enough. We're going to finish with that. I'm enough. We're going to have that conversation. Do you feel like you're enough? You know, sometimes in past relationships, I felt like I was never, I was never going to show up. I was never enough. I was never fucking enough. I was never fucking enough. I was never fucking enough, man. I was never enough. I was, but to this person, I wasn't who they wanted me to be. I wasn't who they needed me to show up as. So to them, I wasn't enough. And then it gets to the point where I would never be enough for them. And you start to believe those things about yourself. But I listen to a song pretty much every day that just repeats that, I'm enough. I'm enough. My son sings out with me. I'm enough. And we dance. Uh, we have a certain dance that we do when we sing that song. We bring the energy in. Let's end that podcast there. Say, I'm enough. I'm enough. And bring that energy in. Call that energy in. I'm enough. I'm enough. Call that energy in. I'm enough. I'm enough. Now push that bullshit out, those lies. Push the lies out. There's no time. There's not enough time. You know, there's not enough time in life for that bullshit. There's not enough time in life for that bullshit. Not enough time. So we're going to wrap it up. So some of this stuff, if you like some of this stuff, if you're a man, and you listen to the podcast, or you're a woman and you know someone who could benefit, or you identify as a man, as male. Um, these are some of the points from my program. This is just one module. No, this is just one month. So some of the stuff we go over. Honest self appraisal. Honest self appraisal. That's what we're doing. We're being honest with ourselves. So we're wrapping up the month. So honesty is about to be over. We have one more guest next week. We're going to have an honest conversation with this brother. But um, I'm enough. So are you. Let's wrap it up. If you're listening, rate, share, subscribe. If you're listening, you could also watch. Share share the YouTube channel, Big Moo TV. Transformational Mentorship is going live in February. So we'll be t- enrolling clients um, and partner- we'll be in partnership with men in uh, February with some transformational mentorship, 12-month program. So you can commit to six months at a time. That's fine. But 12-month program, you cannot say, all these three-month programs say, oh, you're going to sh- transform your life in three months. Even I did that. Even I did that. You can only scratch the surface in three months. You need a year to get to the work, to get down and dirty. Last year, I took me a year of work to get to this point right now where I can come speak to you in the way that I'm speaking to you and stand up tall. I know I was doing it before I was putting on a good show before, but I did the work. I'm a different person. I'm showing up different. Anyway, let's wrap it up. We love you. Peace.